One of the important orchestration features is to monitor the health of the application containers and to take necessary actions in case containers go unhealthy. In this video, we will understand how to create self-healing applications in Kubernetes. We will cover the following topics as part of this video, liveness probes, readiness probes and startup probes. First topic is probes in general. A probe is a diagnostic performed periodically by the kubelet on a container. To perform a diagnostic, the kubelet calls a handler implemented by the container. Handler defines a specific action that should be taken. Each probe has one of the three results. Success, it means that the container passed the diagnostic. Failure, the container failed the diagnostic. And unknown, the diagnostic failed so no action should be taken. Let's talk about handlers. A probe can have three types of handlers. Only one of the following can be specified at a time in a probe. First is exec action. It executes a specified command inside the container. The diagnostic is considered successful if the command exits with a status code of zero. TCP socket action. It performs a TCP check against the container's IP address on a specified port. The diagnostic is considered successful if the port is open. And third is HTTP GET action. It performs an HTTP GET request against the container's IP address on a specified port and path. The diagnostic is considered successful if the response has a status code greater than or equal to 200 and less than 400. Probes are optional. The kubelet can perform and react to three kinds of probes on running containers. First is liveness probe. It indicates whether the container is responsive. If the liveness probe fails, the kubelet kills the container and the container is subjected to its restart policy. For example, the liveness probes could catch a deadlock where an application is running but unable to make progress. Restarting a container in such a state can help to make application more available despite bugs. Readiness probe indicates whether the container is ready to service requests. If the readiness probe fails, the endpoints controller removes the pod's IP address from the endpoints of all the services that match the pod. One use of this signal is to control the pods that are used as backends for services. When a pod becomes ready, only then the higher tier pods start making requests to it. Startup probe indicates whether the application within the container is started. All other probes are disabled if a startup probe is provided until it succeeds. If the startup probe fails, the kubelet kills the container and the container is subjected to its restart policy. This can be used to adopt liveness checks on slow starting containers avoiding them getting killed by the kubelet before they are up and running. Let's see some probes in practice. Firstly, we'll understand liveness probe through an example. This deployment runs a single replica of BusyBox. We have defined the liveness probe for this container. The period seconds field specifies that the kubelet should perform a liveness probe every 5 seconds. The initial delay seconds field tells the kubelet that it should wait 5 seconds before performing the first probe. And to perform the probe, the kubelet executes the command cat slash tmp slash healthy inside the container. If the command succeeds, it returns 0 and the kubelet considers the container to be alive and healthy. If the command returns a non-zero value, the kubelet kills the container and restarts it. In the command that we have specified to the container, after the initial 60 seconds, the file slash tmp slash healthy gets deleted. Let's run this deployment now. So here we can see that there is no error related to liveness probe. Let's run the same command again.
Now we can see that the pod has been running for 87 seconds. And here we can see that the liveness probe has failed because the file had got deleted. And then there is a message that the liveness probe failed, hence the container will be restarted. In this example, we have defined command based liveness probe, which is exec action type of handler. Other options could have been a liveness HTTP request or a TCP liveness probe. Let's go through an example of the readiness probe. This YAML file creates a service, a persistent volume, a persistent volume claim, and finally the deployment. Under the container specification, I have specified the readiness probe. This is a TCP socket readiness probe which does the check on port 3306 which is used by MySQL. Let's apply this YAML now. Probes have a number of fields that can be used to more precisely control its behavior. Initial delay seconds is the number of seconds after the container has started and before the readiness probes are initiated. The default value is 0 seconds and the minimum is also 0. Timeout seconds is the number of seconds after which the probe times out. Default to 1 second and minimum is also 1 second. Period seconds is how often to perform the probe. The default is 10 seconds and the minimum is 1 second. Success threshold Minimum consecutive successes for the probe to be considered successful after having failed. Defaults to 1 and minimum value is 1 as well. And the failure threshold. When a pod starts and the probe fails, Kubernetes will try failure threshold times before giving up. Giving up in case of liveness probe means restarting the container and in case of readiness probe, the pod will be marked unready for the services. The default is 3 and minimum value is 1. And here we can see that initially the readiness probe failed because the connection was refused. This is because MySQL takes some time to start accepting connections and we had started the probe with a delay of 0 seconds. Since the probe had failed, the container was not in ready state. Let's check it again. So now the container is in running state and same can be verified from the logs for this container. So now we can see that the MySQL D is ready for connections. Readiness and liveness probes can be used in parallel for the same container. Using both can ensure that traffic does not reach a container that is not ready for it and that containers are restarted when they fail. That's it for this video. We covered some details about probes in Kubernetes and what are the different types of available probes. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Witz Labs. Success certified.